right, so welcome back. So we've got these models. Uh, great. Uh, we got to do something with them, right? So there are two things we need to do. Um, one is we need to put them into the data store, and then we also need to get them out of the data store. Just because right now in your app the, there are syntax errors, errors on the queries, that's the pulling them out. We're actually going to pull them out first, which admittedly is kind of pointless because you can't pull them out until there's something to pull out. Um, but it's going to fix up our syntax error. So we're going to actually uh, handle the queries first, and we're going to talk about queries some. So let's talk about queries. So there's a couple good links. Uh, these links are in the slides. I'll also try to reference them above uh, to learn about queries. If you go to these two links, uh, what it is is these are within the NDB data store API. So this is if you're using the data store from within Python App Engine, then, then it's called NDB, which is what we're doing. And there's kind of two sections. There's a section that just kind of talks about it, so it just kind of talks in general uh, about queries. And then there's also, if you go down to the reference below, uh, down into this reference below, there's an area that like talks about the specific methods. So if you wanted to, you could, you could go read these. To be honest, if you do go read them, I would probably recommend that you only read like the first little bit, because to be honest, these, this, especially this first page, it gets into some depth that we're, we're not going to go into, but I at least wanted you to know about the reference right up front. And then in addition to like the general like, like verbiage overview, there's the, the reference on like what are the different methods that I've got. Uh, and I guess I've got these in reverse order. So this one is about the methods. So specifically, for example, on a query, you could call things like fetch, right? So fetch is one way you, you, you get uh, all the data. Interesting, if you wanted only one thing, you could say get. So if you knew your query was going to return one thing, you just say get on it. Um, there's also things like order and filter that we're going to talk and learn more about. So those are the references that we care about. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was how do you make a query? So we've already kind of done the basics of we, we've made a query, right? So you say what the class is. And then you say dot query, and so that's how you're going to make this query. And then inside, like the constructor, you can add certain things. So there are actually four things that you can add to the constructor. So one is the ancestor. So this is if it's part of if its key is part of a hierarchy, and you want to only look for things with that ancestor, you would specify the ancestor. The ancestor is special because it has to be specified when you construct the query. It's, it's the only thing, I think it's the only one, uh, no kind is also locked in, um, that has to be set at the time of construction. You cannot set that one later. So kind is obvious, right? Like you almost, I feel like you get that one for free because you, you call query on, on a certain class. And then there's two more. There's filters and then there's orders. These, they both have like, you can do it after the fact. So you can add like a filter um, like that, and you can add an order. Uh, and we've done order before, but we've never done filter. Um, this is one way to do it. For no apparent reason, you can also do these things inside the constructor. Um, that, that's not the no apparent reason. The, the no apparent reason part is, for some reason in Google's documentation, they, they never specify filter after the fact. They always do it during the constructor. And for order, they do the reverse, right? So they typically put that dot on later and they, they never do it during the constructor. Um, I'm not sure why, there's, there's no reason for that, but I'm gonna do it the same way, right? So ancestor and kind have to be done in the constructor. Filter and order could be done during the constructor or later. We're gonna do filter in the constructor and, and then order later. That's just kind of how we're, how we're gonna do it. Great references about uh, all these things if you want to use any of those references. Talking about it is, is fun, but it's not that fun. Uh, let's go do some of these things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing different queries. So one of the first queries we're gonna do is we're gonna be querying for assignments. Um, and so I just wanted to bring up a, a reminder of what an assignment looks like. So an assignment, its key is underneath the, the parent key for the user. Um, and then it's gonna have things in it. Um, it's gonna have the name of the assignment is what's gonna be in it. So that's gonna be one of the first things we're doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up um, utils.py. So if you open up utils, maybe you already had it open. You can see that there's various to-dos. Uh, so you can count them. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, six, and seven. So there are a total of seven queries. We're going to do one together, and then we're going to kind of turn you loose uh, to, to do some more queries. 
So what I want you to do is I want you to read the uh, the description for what we're trying to do here. So, so for this first one, what we're trying to do is we're trying to query for all assignments um, for this user only, uh, order by name, and then fetch. So it's trying to tell you what you wanted to do. Um, I chose to, to kill the word to do, but to move the to do above it just, just so I could remember what I'm doing. We're just going to do this one together. So we need assignments. So we know for sure we're going to say assignment.query, because assignment was the name of the class. Query is how we're going to create our query. Um, if you read this, it says, and then fetch. So we're going to end this thing with a fetch. And fetch, um, this is an expensive operator, right? So this converts it. So making a query is easy. It just, it just prepares to do something. But then fetch actually gets it from the data store, and it returns it as a list. It turned out that what this function needed it is it needed it to be a list, um, and so it just it has a fetch on it. Um, some of the later ones may or may not have fetches. Uh, just add fetch if it says fetch. You can also tell by the name. I try to name my queries, like if it had been a query, I would have called it assignments query. But since it has a fetch at the end, I just call it assignments because it's like real assignments. All right, so we said query for assignments for this user. So in order to limit it, uh, what I want to do is I want to say, uh, the ancestor, I'm going to specify the ancestor in this, is equal to, and I've actually got a function up here to do it, uh, get parent key, and I'm going to pass in user, which was passed to me, so I just pass it along. Um, so this statement right here is going to limit it to just the assignments for whoever signed in. So if, if FisherDS uh, at Gmail is signed in, he's going to only see quotes that he made, right? Um, we haven't made any quotes but that's kind of the idea. The next question it says is to order by name. So we're going to say dot order, and we're going to specify some order. So ordering by name is easy. We're just going to say assignment dot name. Uh, and that's the first one, right? So you can check your uh, check with the slides uh, to see if uh, you know you got that one right. That one's done. Uh, what I want you to try to do is this is kind of an honor system, right? Is I want you to try to implement this on your own, right? So there's six more. So of the seven, we did one. To be honest, the last two are really easy. So if you wanted to, you could start with the last two. Um, and then, what is it? The fourth one is probably the hardest. And the top three are similar to the one we just did. Um, so pause the video, totally an honor system that you're pausing the video, uh, and go try it on your own, right? All right, so hopefully you, you knocked them out. You can select check the slides uh, to say you did. I'm just going to knock them out really fast here. So uh, the, the next one down, query for all students. Uh, so I have to have a student. And I want to be for this user. So I set the, uh, the parent key or the ancestor uh, to my get parent key, and that just gets uh, that high level one. Um, and then it says order by row's username. So I set the order to row's username. And then it says and then fetch. Uh, and then I and then fetched. Uh, looks like I got a typo there, uh, CH, uh, and that's the first one. The next one is even easier, uh, so you're getting grade entries this time, so grade entry, um, you're getting only the ones for this user, uh, so grade entries for this user. We don't care about the order, so we're just calling fetch, uh, so that's the second one. The next one down has a little twist to it, so it says in this one to query all grade entries for an assignment. Um, so the structure is that there's a key for um, the, the user, and then there's also a key for the assignment. And so we actually want the ones that are in this assignment, not, not every grade entry, just the ones in this assignment. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say grade entry, and then we're going to still have an ancestor query, but we're not going to use get parent key. We're going to use the assignment key. And so that, of course, you know, if you have 50 homework assignments and you just want homework three, it gives you just the homework three grades. The other thing that was different about this is you'll notice that it did not say and then fetch. And so we did not and then fetch it. And if you look at the variable name, it's grades for assignment query, which means that there was no fetch done on it yet. All right, that was that one. Uh, the next one's actually my favorite because it actually uses a filter. Um, you may not have succeeded on this on your own, but let's look at it. All right, so the next one down is our first one that has a filter, right? So we want all grade entries for this user. You know, we know how to do that. Um, and, and then it says just kind of very casually and student key, right? So the very casual and student key is actually important because that's actually a property 
on a grade entry that we want to filter over. So we're going to say <coughs> grade entry query. Uh, we're going to specify the ancestor second, um, and then we're going to specify the filter uh, first. Um, there are many ways that you could have done this, right? So you could have specified just the ancestor and the constructor, and then you could have said dot filter, and then you could have added the filter, which is, you know, just this text uh, plugged into there. And to be honest, that might have been more readable. Um, I mean, maybe that's maybe that's the better way to do it. But they both work. I mean, the other way you could have done it is in the same way that you said ancestor equals. You could have said, I think it's filters plural equals. Um, but for some reason, most uh, most documentation that I see, um, it puts the filters right into the constructor. Um, you can actually have multiple filters, so you just separate them with a comma, which is kind of nice. Uh, the problem is, is then you have to have the named uh, ancestor after those. So many ways to do it. This is the way that I chose to write it. Write it the same as me if you want. If you want to write it uh, as a dot filter after the constructor, that's fine too. But you'll notice that there is no request for any ordering uh, and there is no request for fetch. So these are all the grades for a certain student. So grab everything for this student. And if you look at what this method is doing, is it's removing the student from the class, right? So it's getting all their grades across all the assignments and it's gonna, it's gonna punt them. Uh, you can see that there's a key delete coming coming in this method. All right, there's that one. Uh, the next two are actually really easy, so we'll do the next two together. All right, so our last two are right here. Um, these are for when you're just blowing away all the data, right? So it says, give me every single grade uh, for, for this user, um, and then give me every single student uh, for this user. You'll notice that we don't care about order and we don't care about, about fetching it now. Because it's about to blow away everything. So this is like, you know, if you're in the fall quarter for a class and then you're preparing for the winter quarter, you want to blow away everything. Uh, but you're going to keep the assignments because they they might be useful to you in the future. Um, all right. So this is some practice with some queries. And to be honest, like I think that after some practice, you should almost go back and now you should look at the the documentation, right? So here's some documentation that you could look at that will, will hopefully kind of make some more sense to you if you wanted to read some of that. Um, and then here's the constructor and the four pieces that you can specify in the constructor. Um, and then there's different ways to do filter and order. They can be in the constructor or not. Uh, I'll also say that if you wanted to, it, it's syntax error free now. Um, so you should be able to actually run it. So if you wanted to run it, you could, uh, for the first time ever, right click on grade recorder and you could do a run as, uh, it's off the screen, PyDev Google App Engine Run. And you can go load up uh, localhost uh, 8080, and it should be there. When you first uh, fire it up, it'll ask you to sign in. Uh, localhost is funny because it doesn't really sign you in. It's just you say what email address you'd like. I'm just going to leave it as test example. <clears throat> and when you say log in, it doesn't ask you for a password. It just it just tells you back in. Yeah, this guy's logged in. Here's his email address. Uh, note that there's also a thing here about signing in as administrator. To be honest, unless you're doing something that's like different for administrators from every other users, this checkbox doesn't matter. For most things we'll do in this course, it doesn't matter. So there, there's no reason to check that box. Um, eventually we'll, we'll talk about administrators, maybe. So you can load it up right now, um, but I'll warn you, if you try to actually add a student, it's, it's not going to actually get added. Same with adding an assignment or adding a grade. None of them will work. And the reason that none of them work is if you go to the insert handlers page, um, you'll find that, that uh, all of these functions are, are not done yet. So some of the things we're going to do in the next areas, we're going to kind of one by one go through here and make these things work. All right, that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.